uh, uh, connection is a little bit unstable, but we are on business. Welcome everybody. Welcome Irina, Miltos, and uh, all our guests. I mute myself. You have the honor. Okay. So good morning. Uh, so glad to have you here. Uh, I uh, was tempted to start like good morning, but not Vietnam, but Miltus and all the <laughs> others from the intergalactic. Yes, yes, yes. For this um, galactic imaginarium, because you have to have a lot of imagination to succeed to such a festival, especially in such a uh, complicated uh, period of time. Uh, but you know. Mm. On our planet's time, it's not the same as everywhere else. I think for us uh, cinema lovers and cinema goers, yeah, I think it's uh, something totally different. So uh, thank you so much um, for having you today with us. And um, I'm uh, um, very happy that um, we have the possibility to ask you as many questions as we can. And uh, I would start um, by asking you if you have, a, at the very beginning, it was a theater or cinema. And if you used also your power of sword in the mm, theater. Mm. Mm. Uh, so I guess I've always been influenced by film. So film is like my first love. Okay. And that is because um, when I was a child, when I was very young, my my father had a, a restaurant hmm. in the UK. When they came to the UK, the, they had a restaurant. Um, um, and as if by magic, my father is calling me just as I mention his name. <laughs> <laughs> you see? It's oh, I'm just going like to have to uh, tell him to <laughs> go yeah, away. No, you can answer. It's funny. No, I like just that. held it. I, it's fine. It's fine because uh, okay. it will be, it will be uh, the weekly telephone call. They always call me on Sunday mornings. Um, mm, but, uh, Sunday but it was morning just so call. funny. Okay. Yeah. But where it's, is as he? As soon as I mentioned my father, it, he called. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's always yes. It's a nice coincidence. What is called yeah. a sweet coincidence. Yes. He um he used to take me when he used to finish lunch the 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 mm -hmm. the, 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 the shift at lunchtime. We would go to the cinema in the afternoons between for those three hours and uh it was a sort of a matinee like in the theater yeah and we mm -hmm. would go and see bruce lee films i remember <gasps> i think i was like seven or eight and he took me to see the big boss which was an ah. x was it an x in those times which was a completely i'm sure illegal <laughs> i mean it's only martial arts yeah, when you look back sure, on those yeah, movies yeah. you know uh you'd never get a uh, an X rating now for a bit of fisticuffs, would you? In in uh, mm -hmm. any country of censorship and uh, classifications, so that felt. Um, but that was my first experience of uh, martial arts, and of course, as a seven-year-old, it was really. So it was again a fight. It wasn't with swords so much. No, yeah. but it to me, it's the sound. same thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. using using weapons and not using weapons, the the mm -hmm. principles of the choreography and the principles yeah. of the fight are always the same. So, um, so that was my starting point, my very first mm -hmm. starting point. But um, my exposure to theatre was, of course, the first thing that happened at school, and I wasn't very academic. I didn't really enjoy school. I was one of those kids that just didn't. You know, so many kids, they love going to school. They love going to see their friends. Uh, they, uh, and teachers I, I, sometimes, it depends on yeah, the teacher. Yeah, the they love, yeah, they yeah, love yeah. all of those things, but, um, but I hated it. I really was miserable. I was a very quiet kid. I was a very solitary. I have a sister, but um, I learned very quickly to kind of look after myself. So, mm -hmm. so school was a bit of a problem for me. But when I did find a way of making connection with school was through theatre plays. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I discovered that, 
uh, everything changed. And I really, really enjoyed that. I would uh, be become obsessed by it. I was obsessed with the, with my theatre days when I was a when I was a student. Uh, I don't think I was very good, to be honest. Uh, but 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 I was very enthusiastic. I was really, you know, I really loved it. I wouldn't socialize with my friends, but I would always go to my rehearsals after school and stuff like that, you know, so that's, that was really how, where I, where I came from. So theatre was an easy thing for me to get into and, and I went and studied it as a degree at university or polytechnic at that in those days. Wow, um, like Simona, okay. Yeah, and uh, it was a great course and exposed me to, to theatre from all over the world, which if I If I had, uh, if I'd gone to a drama school, you know, an mm -hmm. established drama school in the UK, I would have learned a lot and got a great agent and had a very different career. But, but I, the course I did was fantastic because it was run by a man whose speciality, even though he was British, his speciality was in Eastern European theatre. Uh, and at the time, so this is the beginning of the 90s. Oh. We had amazing theatre companies, mm -hmm. companies that came from Romania, from um, yeah. Poland, who were the doing... The National Theatre from Romania travelled a lot. The most Romania, amazing yes, yeah. theatre shows that we had never mm -hmm. seen before in our lives. Literally, as, a, as an 18-year-old, it blew my mind mm -hmm. and changed the trajectory of where I wanted to go, especially in theatre. So with the theatre... Um, I was much more interested in experimental, avant-garde. I was interested in what makes a theatre performance. And so for a long time, when I first started acting, I was devising and creating shows, uh, collaborating with other actors and creating things from scratch, usually mm -hmm. influenced by uh, theatre companies like DV8 and kind of like very kind of like high class Uh, movement, physical theatre, dance, you know, that, that was really where I, where I was at my happiest, uh, using my body. So, mm -hmm. so that, of course, then led me to dance. Mm -hmm. And then that led me to, to choreography. And that led me to fight choreography. And so these, these things are all connected, but they all started in, in, in my love of being very physical. So, Mm -hmm. So that was for a long time a huge part of my life and because I didn't really have a very good agent I couldn't really get any good castings on TV and film. The way that the system is run in this country is that in the UK is that is that usually casting directors not only, not only yeah of course uh, casting directors will have their their favorite agents that they will always use because most agents mm -hmm. have you know, the typical breakdown of, of, of every kind of constituent that you might want in casting. A good, a, a good agency mm -hmm. will have that, so they can cover the bases. So it was very difficult for me to get any, any, any telly work, but, but I did bits and pieces here and there, um, but really doing Game of Thrones and get, getting a new agent, I changed my agent and then ah. I got a great agent and then- Is it he or a she? Uh, she, she, she and he, they're a partnership, uh, uh, Bloomfields Welsh, they, they're really fantastic. They look after me like, uh, like family as well, which is mm -hmm. a nice thing. Usually sometimes this can be a bit like professional, but, but uh, they're fantastic agents, but they, uh, they, I have so much respect for them. They, um, they got me an audition for Game of Thrones within about a month. And then, of course, I got the job. And then, of course, I got to work with the amazing William Hobbs and, and the rest is history. And so, so that's how I came to um, what I do in theatre and film and where the connection with the, the fighting comes from. Um, the reason I got Game of Thrones was because I did actually have experience. And the experience came from 10 years working at the Royal Shakespeare Company. Mm -hmm. And, of course... There's lots of fights, especially with blades and, and swords in, in Shakespeare. So, so I got to work with some fantastic fight choreographers there. And I learned I had a natural aptitude for that kind of stuff. Um, 
you know, I, I'm lucky because my brain processes that kind of information quite well so that I can, if you show me some moves, I can replicate them without too much difficulty. Uh -huh. But do you need also uh, to be quite good in following music in order to be, uh, in order to do this kind of choreography, I mean, with words and so on, or not at all? So I've noticed when I've worked with other people is, is that I'm watching fight choreographers work with different actors, is that everyone responds mm -hmm. to different things. Like for example, uh, if, I, if I approach trying to learn choreography by overthinking it, uh, for example, some people write it down, like they plot mm -hmm. it, like, um, like, uh, like, like, like you just write down the moves and you write mm -hmm. them down and you, and you go through them because you see them, you know, in your, in your, on your, on your piece of paper and you practice them a little bit at a time and you remind yourself what you're doing because it's written down. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I literally have to do the move, but by doing the move physically, I seem to be able to imprint it in my memory. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's one, it's just one of those things. I'm very bad at many other mental exercises. Very bad. <laughs> don't I even don't really get me, it. no, don't even get me started on mathematics. I'm terrible <laughs> at it. But for some reason, I can visualize, I can I think this, I don't think it's called, I don't think I have anything close to like a photographic memory, but I remember patterns because I can mm -hmm. see them. So I you can watch- your blood? A, maybe, but you know, yeah. I can watch, I can watch a choreographer and I can just ingest it. Like I can mm -hmm. learn it almost immediately for some reason and I can't explain it. But I know that other people, what they do need is they need to practice it. They need to break it down need to do a little bit of it a little bit more and I just find that uh everyone has a different way of approaching it for me I just have to do it and it's the same with acting um I can go home and I can learn a script and I can practice it with another actor sitting here and I will know all the lines and as soon as you stand me up and then make me have to do the acting like literally emoting I forget everything. Mm -hmm. Forget everything. I can't do the two things. I have to rehearse and learn my lines at the same time. If I learn my lines in connection to what I'm doing emotionally and physically, for some reason it goes in much quicker. I see. So I it's have a, yeah. I have a question Please related. <laughs> okay. I have a question related to what you said. Um, I was talking last year at the Comic Con with uh, the Night King, with uh, Vladimir Fordi. Okay. And ask him about uh, the input of an actor uh, um, in uh, his act. His uh, input is uh, small or big uh, related to the director's instructions. He said that he follows the uh, director's instructions and the script. What about choreography? How is your relation with the director in uh, Very good, in so that's film? a really good question because, you know, I, I remember the very first day on Game of Thrones for me, I was gonna do the very first lesson, the very first lesson with Arya Stark when she meets Syria for the first time. And I remember that was a scene I auditioned and I had to do that five times. I, I, that was the first thing I learned is a three and a half minute scene. And I had to just show that to producers and directors and casting agents. And we did it over and over again. So I knew that scene pretty well, but, but the, the, the reality is, is that you're terrified. <laughs> First of all, you're terrified. We make it look easy. We make it look like we know what we're doing. But inside, I'm like terrified. I'm I'm going on to set on a on a on a big show. I have a couple of scenes. I have three scenes, and I have to make an impression. And these these pressures, 
you know, you hope that you're going to do it right. You hope it's not just about remembering your lines. You have to learn, remember the choreography. And it took us three days to film that one scene, three and a half minutes long. It took us three days because they really wanted it to get it right. We used, you know, um, so many different ways of filming it too. So I, I, I remember me and Maisie going through the choreography that we had cooked up with William in London. And the directors didn't really tell us anything. David and Dan and the director of the, the episode said to me, um, that's fantastic. Uh, I'm so sorry, I'm don't, I don't know what's just happened. Something's happened to my. I think it's your phone, isn't it? The aliens are. No, an applica a, 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 a piece of software has just opened itself up and won't go away. Ah. And it's now doing. The fridge is open. I can see it. Yeah, hello. Mm -hmm. um, so, so they didn't really say anything to me. They said to me, and I asked them uh, just before I shot the scene, the very first scene, I said to them, How do I pronounce the word bravosi? How do I pronounce. Um, uh, how do I, uh, do you want me to be more flamboyant or do you want me to make him much smaller, quieter character? And David and Dan just said to me, look, just do it the way you did it for the audition because that's the reason why we ca ca uh, cast you. Don't overthink it. Don't worry too much about it. We cast you for a reason. We trust you. Just go out there and just enjoy yourself. That's the only direction I got. That's Thank it. <laughs> so just be yourself is just enough. That depends on the Perfect. director. Other people are really precise. Like I worked with a director who kept making me do this scene over and over and over again until it was perfect. And I didn't even know what the difference was. <laughs> so it always depends on the creative person and every creative person is different you've met uh, creative obsessives you know I think I can be a little bit like that when I'm a director I can ask for a lot of my of my actors but that's because I expect to be treated like that too so thank you Mirtas. okay feel free to ask questions May I ask you a question? Yes. Miltos, I'd like to I'd like to ask you about the accent you used in Game of Thrones. Yeah, well, my accent. Were you instructed to use that or was it your idea or they what did that mean to you to put up an accent? So in the breakdown that the casting director Nina Gold sent it said that he was a foreigner. So he's a different type of person to the other people you meet in this world. That was the most important thing about him is that he was different. In the books, I think I mentioned this yesterday, in the books, Sirio is described as very slight, very small, very slight, much older than me, like in his 70s. And 60s, you know, and uh, bald, no hair whatsoever, and a big nose, big hook nose. And um, for many months, we talked about me being bald. Wow. Wow. And uh, of course, I said yes, because as I mentioned yesterday, I love dressing. My, the whole, my, my whole reason for acting is to not be myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I, I was, I jumped to the chance. I said, "Yeah, if you want to shave my hair off, I'm happy to do that." But then George R. R. Martin got 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 involved, and he said, "No, you don't need to shave his head. His he, the way he looks is exotic or different enough. He will look different to, you know, Sean Bean and Robert uh, Robert Baratheon, and you know those people, the long haired, hairy people." I was not like that, you know. So, so uh, uh, first of all, physically, the description is very, very different. 
but he was very clear that he was different. So he had, so so they wanted me to try, and this is also the reason why they gave me the role because they knew that I was Greek Cypriot. They knew that um, I have a long tradition of playing foreigners. I play. I mean, that's all I really do. I just, you know, I play French people, Italian people, you name it. That's all, you know, whatever. Romanian? Any Romanian? I haven't done Romanian yet. <gasps> Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, so, uh, so my natural starting point is always to do an impersonation of my dad. Mm -hmm. So, so that's where it began, the voice. The voice began with me doing an impersonation of my papa. And then I realized that I needed it to be something that wasn't, uh, that I didn't want it to be specific. Oh my God, he's crying so much. Yeah, I'm just going to have to get this. Yeah, but take it in your arms. I'm not going to take him in my arms. I'm just going to get the ball. It's the ball. He puts it under the, oh God. Yeah. Can't get the stuff. Um, I should have someone looking after the dog right now, but because we're living in a pandemic, no one's allowed into my house. Um, <laughs> I, um, I, where was I? I was talking about the accent. Your dad. I, I didn't want it to be specific. I didn't want you to be able to recognize it and go, oh, that's Spanish or that's Italian or that's Greek. So I, I created that voice, started with my dad's, my, doing an impersonation of my dad, and then just pushed it further east. So it was more like Middle Eastern. And that's why I was, sometimes I listen to it and I just think, oh my God, it was, it's awful. I over, overroll my R's so much that I think it's just, it's too much. And I think, I mean, remember that's like 10 years ago now. And it's amazing how much you change as an actor, even in 10 years. I've become, when I first started, I was very, not very subtle at all. I was a very, I was always being told by directors, make it smaller, make it smaller. And uh, now they're telling me to make it bigger because I've just become a very different actor. I think this is what happens. I think we get older and we kind of find this uh, level of confidence or understanding that we just don't, we don't have for most of our careers. That's why when you, when, if you're lucky enough to be an old actor, I think that's when you're at your peak. So I'm looking Did forward to my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a coach also for an accent or just by no, yourself? No, I didn't, I didn't get, usually you do have a coach. Yeah, but, I but know they, all that. Yeah, usually I, I always have someone to help me with my accent, but I didn't this time. And what about your father? Did he recognize himself in your accent? Um, <laughs> yes, a little bit. It's hard uh -huh. to know really. My dad is the kind of person who doesn't really pay attention to things like that. I remember when I first did did the show and I and the DVD came out uh -huh. of the first season and I and I bought it for my parents because they'd never seen it. You know, they, they they don't have internet or anything like that. They don't even have a TV sub subscription. They just watch the telly as it is. And um, they they had um, I gave them the DVD and I even had to buy them a DVD player. Because, <laughs> because they didn't even have a DD, DVD player. And they never watched it. <laughs> they didn't plug oh, it good. <laughs> My parents have a, a love-hate relationship with my career. They would much mm -hmm. rather I was a teacher and had a steady <sighs> job and uh, had a family with children and all the things that go with that. But unfortunately, I was never going to give them that. So, um, so, so... But I think you are a very good teacher, believe me. Ah, oh, thank you. But yeah, I, sure. but uh, they they said they they didn't watch the show until it started being screening sc screened uh, on on terrestrial Cypriot television. Mm -hmm. And what the that, the village does is that they all go outside and they sit in the in the open air cafes, and mm -hmm. they watch the football on the big TV outside. And everyone sits yeah. outside, has their coffee and watches the football. But when Game of Thrones was on, every Sunday night, they would screen the episode on the big screen. So, so my dad is sitting there watching this TV show, completely unaware that I'm in it, even though I've told him about it. And then he, and everyone's like, Roger, is that your son? And I'm like, and he's like, 
oh my God, he's my boy. And this is, and that's literally my dad. And my dad became a celebrity overnight because of me being in a TV show. This is like three years after I told him I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> it takes time. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that was it. But um, to go back to your question, um, I'm terrible at answering questions. Have you noticed that? I always go off in lots of directions. But it's um, not nicer like that. Yeah. So I, I, I didn't have a, a coach. I just, I remember when I met David and Dan and the head honcho at HBO and they all came to London to meet me. This was the final audition. This is when I really cracked myself because I realized that I was this close to getting it. Up till then, I was not, I was dismissive. I was like, I was never going to get it. Forget it. They're going to give it to Ben Kingsley. It's fine. And, um, and then they, they, they asked me to do the scene that I told you in know, the first lesson in lots of different accents. I did it in British. I did it in, in the accent we ended up with. I did it in kind of like a, a gruff uh, Greek accent. I did it in Spanish, did it in Italian. They, I did it in all these different voices for them to see. And then they, eventually they just settled with the one that they said, the thing that comes more naturally to you is the, is the, the most natural. So. Any more questions? If not, I have a whole list. I have one. Miltos, have you ever lent your voice to an animated character? Um, only in the, only, only once on a game for pl uh, PlayStation official. It was the official Lord of the Rings PlayStation game. Mm -hmm. um, and I got to voice uh, Gollum. So I did the voice of Gollum. For, the, for the, If you play those old games that came out just after the films came out, they are, that when you play Gollum, that's my voice. And I lost my voice for three days after doing that. I was in a studio doing that voice and doing all the, uh, uh, you know, climbing up mountains and falling for hours and hours. So uh, that was exciting. I'd love to do more, but the trouble is in this country, if you want to be a voice actor, you have to just be a voice actor. Mm. Very hard. I mean, everyone wants to be a voiceover now because no one's got any other work to do. I just narrated uh, a book by a, a short novella, which I can send you a link to, uh, a narrated, yeah. like an audio book. I did it myself. It's a little bit ropey, but I, I recorded it in my own flat using my own software. But the writer has written this beautiful fantasy book. Uh, it's called The Tower of Mud and Straw, and it's really, really good. It's not your typical dragons and knights, but it is uh, intriguing and surprising and very poetic. It's a very beautiful Russian writer, a uh, young Russian writer. I will find a link and send it to you so you can share it because it's good. It's only just come out. They're doing it as a podcast, so they're doing it like a four-part podcast, so you can um, hear it on that. I want to ask if it's possible. Hello, hello. Hello, my hello, friend. Hello. Well, I, I didn't sleep at, at night because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking how to work today. <laughs> and I'm training myself, you know, they give me an entire hall here. I can't believe you've got all that space. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's, it's a craziness. It will be so beautiful if we are together here, but we will see. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you, how hard it was for you to learn the accents because it is uh, as i know in in uh, la I, because i have friends some friends there they said it is most expensive to have a dialogue teacher than an acting teacher because it is so important especially for la actors now i mean in fact british actors you think about british actors we i mean i think we're employed because we can do accents. I don't think you'll ever get employed as a British actor if you can't do a convincing American accent anymore. Yes. 
actors yeah. used to get away with it all the time, but not not anymore. But um, well, as I said just just a minute ago, I I kind of found I've been lucky enough to work with voice the dialect coaches, and they've been really good, and they've really helped me, and and uh, they're invaluable because you think you're, for example, there was an episode of The Crown that I did, and I had to speak in Greek, I had to be just in Greek, yeah. yes. But the difference is, is that I don't speak Greek like an Athenian. Yes, I speak, true. I speak Greek like my dad, and his generation. Uh, spoke Greek and Turkish. So uh, the, d the dialect that I learned just phonetically from my parents betrays that I, my age. Because they look at me and they go, hang on, you sound like an old man. You speak Greek like an old man. Because, because when my parents, you know, living in a, in, a, in a village in Cyprus before the war, they had, you know, they lived in a village with half of the people were Turkish. So the, the Turkish language and the Greek language used to mingle quite a lot. And so my dad learned his Greek in a, in a slightly different phonetic to like a mainland Athenian. So I had to learn how to speak Greek like an Athenian. And I cannot tell you how difficult it was. It was so difficult because I was already n n naturalized to speaking Greek words within a certain way. And then the woman would stop me and go, that's kind of not how you pronounce that word. And I've been saying that word for all my life. <laughs> so, but these things that you learn, to unlearn them are the hardest. When you're doing a brand new accent, it's kind of a little bit easier. And remember, I was making it up. So as I as I said, I, I I made it much more like my father. I it was much more closer to my roots than um, than having to be really specific. But when you're specific, it's difficult. I know because I have I don't know if maybe you 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 keep it Sandy Low. It, it was one of the best teachers uh, in languages from from London. Uh, he was, I met him, I have the pleasure to meet him in the film of Costa Gavras, which is Greek like you. Yeah, yeah. He, spoke, he said about this kind of accents, which they are different from a part to another, from a time to another. Yeah. So Sandy had the, the knowledge about the English, of course, about French, about Russian, about even Greek. And when he talked with the actors, because in, in the film of Costa Gavras, and Italian either, uh, in the film of Costa Gavras, they need to have Italians, Germans, Russians, Austrians, which are different than the Germans, you know, they have different kind of speech. Yeah. Yiddish in the same. So Sandy said, that is, a, and they, they, I cannot say exactly academical that word, but they ask you, to say exactly the word in the exact definition. So you as actor, you know very well that to my, you should think at your character, you should think at the period, you should think about the situation to have certain lines and certain signs on set. And at the same time, you have that word exactly, you know, exactly spoken for the, So it is extremely hard for that. It's really yeah, hard. It's, about there is no doubt. There is no doubt. It's really difficult because it gets in the way of the acting, and and unless you can be so confident and you have assimilated it so much, it you will it will kind of distract you. That's the thing. Just give me one second. Just dealing with the dog, um, and it will distract you. But but what's really interesting is is for that for that thing about I did a Russian accent on in a play once, and uh, my dialect coach kept saying to me, every time you speak your lines, you sound Ukrainian. It's not bad, because at least <laughs> it's close. <laughs> but they said, but it's not Russian. <laughs> yeah, he's against the Russian. I think yeah. So. James Bond. <laughs> have you seen the, the recent, have you seen Tenet? 
Or not no, yet. I haven't seen it yet, no. Yeah, because there is an accent of Kenneth Branagh in there. Oh, yeah. A funny accent, Russian accent. As funny as the one of Hercule Poirot in... Uh, in the, yes, of course, the Belgian. Murder on the Orient Express, yes, yes. It's funny. I don't think it's very convincing, that's why. Yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. We will have uh, another five, eight minutes if uh, there are any questions. Sorry, I'm the bad girl here <laughs> with right. the time. This is like, a, I like a timekeeper. Zoom I'm very happy master. about timekeepers. Do you know, um, you know, I, I had a very small part in that uh, <laughs> remake that he made. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, I remember doing that scene where we're, clo you know, we're hugging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And he, and I remember him looking at me because we had to stay in that position for a long time <laughs> while they were making some adjustments with the character. And we were embracing each other like this, sort of face to face. And his yeah. moustache, you saw how big it was. Yeah, I said yeah, yeah, him, I, I, I whispered while we were waiting, I said, that's a very impressive moustache. And he said to me, <laughs> he said, you know, it has its own trailer. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very funny man and he's a very, very talented man. I could not believe watching him on set. I could not believe him turning up, doing his acting, then going behind the camera, telling people what to do, and, and then going back. I mean, how, how this man does it, I don't know. <laughs> but the, A Winter's Tale was in his theater or in the Royal Shakespeare? It was at Royal Shakespeare Theater. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, I, I've seen it in uh, in his uh, theatre in London with um, Dame Judi Dench and him. Yeah. Yes. So, yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It was wonderful. Also, yeah. Yeah. It's a great Any play. I like questions? it. I like. I like the oh. first part of the play. I don't like the second part so much. Yeah. Super. The ending's great, of course. When when she comes alive, it's beautiful. Yeah. We did, we did yeah. a beautiful production of it. In, um, the skate in ring was very nice. It was quite an idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe Louis yeah. wants to appear on our screen, so. He doesn't want to appear. All he wants is his ball. If I picked him up now, he'd cry in my face. He's, yeah. he's now nudging me. He's d desperately trying to get me to get the ball. Yeah, but the I attention, will... that's the idea. So much, so naughty. Come here, come here. Come here. Come here. I have a request, Miltos. So sorry, hello. <laughs> Can you oh, please God. do the line with the God of Death? For all the fans who, who would love to hear you say it. Okay, please. we're going to do it. We have to do the, the lines properly, okay? So you have to play Arya Stark, okay? So I'm going to ask you, do you believe in the gods? And you say, yes the old and the new and mm -hmm. then i say there is only one god yeah okay okay do you believe in the gods the old and the new there is only one god and his name is death and there is only one thing we say to the god of death not today thank you thank you wow thank, thank you, you. That was that was absolutely thank you so much. Thank you, Liza. Thank you, Mildred. Thank, thank you. you. So we'll meet again. We're we going to seamlessly yes. just go into our next meeting. Yes, uh, I, <laughs> I will stop the recording of this one and uh, oh. we can stay here at uh, 12 o'clock. We'll uh, begin our uh, sword choreography with the Florinke Volkian and Miltos. So stay tuned. So I wanted to ask you, a oh, no, stop the recording yeah. and then I'll ask you a question. Okay, just a moment.